we have with us mr shabir lokhandwala he is managing director and principal structural designer at slabs engineering private limited pune professional structural engineer having vast experience in design of high rise buildings comprising of hotels mixed use developments residential buildings and commercial buildings he has also designed bridges and currently into design of designing of precast high rise buildings in india there are many prestigious projects across country to their credit the topic for the session is building information modeling for well coordinated detailing of various traits of precast project i request sir to come on the stage and start his presentation you know i would be uh, delighted uh, to present before you today and uh, hope uh, you know i'll be able to add value to this particular seminar right so uh, just a quick introduction uh, you know thank you sucheta uh, for uh, uh, the introduction i am a engineer by chance you know i was very passionate in uh, programming and so on and then uh, you know i was preparing for the nata uh, uh, entrance exam for pursuing my architecture just two days before uh, the entrance exam you know someone told my parents that uh, you know uh, you have the only son and it will be good if you put him in civil engineering so then uh, you know i had to deviate from architecture and then uh, i uh, filled up the form that time way back in 2002 uh, to pursue my engineering degree then uh, during the course of engineering it was uh, wonderful i was uh, you know very much uh, inclined towards science and maths and so on and i participated in a lot of robotics competitions automations and so on and uh, i was uh, very much keen and interested in structural engineering and design so from that time onwards you know i have gained a lot of interest in engineering uh, design and uh, thereby you know i have worked in uh, middle east uh, with uh, ku international consultants and i have worked with uh, aroop i have pursued my masters uh, from iit roorkee in structural engineering and design and uh, you know at a path of my career i have won an award from tata housing wherein using six pieces you can actually fabricate a 500 different configurations of villas so that was a time way back in 2011 and 12 so from that time onwards i gained a lot of passion and interest in precast buildings uh, thereby you know i joined a very renowned precast consultant uh, innovella building solutions Uh, owned by uh, Mr. Saurabh Purandare, I worked with him for about a year's time, and thereby in 2014 uh, we started on my own uh, this company known as Slabs Engineering Private Limited. So by God's grace, uh, we have been lucky enough to have some good clients, uh, you know, who trusted us, believed in us, and we have been doing challenging uh, projects uh, thereby onwards. So uh, without taking much of your time, you know, uh, I would be focusing on BIM. How in the precast industry, if you use BIM. it would be advantages to several trades involved in the construction right so this is the overall agenda i would be covering bim and precast how various trades would benefit using bim i would be showcasing you several case studies uh, from our projects and uh, projects in uh, from global markets and then what are the upcoming trends in construction industry that means uh, as you all know now we are living in an era wherein you would see tremendous amount of digitization in construction we have never seen before in the past 100 years you know the kind of investments have been made in research and development and into the software technology in the last few years have not been seen in the past century so this is the era wherein we are going to see a lot of digitization in the construction industry so why bim in precast this is a subject wherein a lot of people question because you know bim is a process bim is not a software right so probably let's say for us the process of bim might be different as a structural engineer the process of bim might be different for a contractor for an architect for an mep consultant and so on right so firstly i would like to highlight that there is a dfma approach design for manufacture and assembly when you talk about dfma approach automatically bim comes into picture right because in precast you cannot sit in an isolated office environment and then design your buildings you you must integrate your designs with production facility manufacturing facility and ensure that whatever elements we design are practically producible at the same time it reduces uh, erection cost and it brings easiness in erection 
So the total approach focuses on easiness on production and erection. Also, there is ample amount of uh, you know a reduction in time and cost. Further, if we use BIM in precast. So as I have already told, BIM is a technology. Now, what is BIM? In the Indian context, let me put it something like this: Building idhar hi mangta hai. Building idhar hi mangta hai ka matlab hai. You have to physically understand the requirements of your discipline, and then virtually create the building in a virtual environment. So BIM is something like where virtual technology meets physical requirements. Okay. So it's basically digitization of your construction requirements and creating a virtual 3D model and whatsoever nitty gritties in your discipline required. This ensures quality in construction and obviously it reduces huge amount of wastage and hence sustainable development. Now DFM is further broken. DFM is not a new concept. It's widely used in the automobile industry and that's how you know automobile uh, industry has moved on uh, so much. So in DFMA, probably you know we try to minimize the number of parts for any given building, thereby optimizing the erection and production methodologies. Now, when it comes to manufacturing, DFMA, when you create a digital model, certainly you know you can export a lot of items from the digital model to enhance the production capabilities, erection capabilities, and so on. Like our earlier speaker yesterday, Amit had mentioned that they are widely using RFID tracking right when the piece is produced in their factory, right from production after the design, the entire BIM model is connected to the central server and everything is tracked. So hence, uh, this approach could only be benefited if you are implementing BIM and digitization in your uh, contracting or precast methodology. So overview, you know, BIM is all about digitization and uh, integrating your physical requirements. BIM is where the digital meets physical. Definitely, there is a lot of scope for 3D, 4D, 5D in the sense we take out the bill of quantities. Then we, you know, ensure that uh, how the construction planning or erection phasing could be done using the same uh, digitization model. And then during the life cycle of the project, Let's say the client or the owner or the project management consulting firm or the asset management firm can utilize the same BIM model to ensure the least amount of maintenance required during the entire life cycle. Also from the BIM model, you know, we have realized substantially we reduce enormous amount of time in extraction of drawings, bill of quantities, and hence we reduce huge amount of errors. We extract uh, all these information from the 3D BIM model. It reduces cost right from design till the erection cycle. As I already mentioned, 3D BIM model can be used for facility management. And further, a lot of companies are integrating the BIM model or the digital model with their fabrication ERP system, right? So everything right from preliminary forecast to final schedules of delivery could be taken out from your BIM model. Clash detection is one of the important parameters wherein several disciplines uh, could be you know integrated in a single server model and you can ensure that as a structural engineer you are meeting all the nitty gritties of the architectural visual requirements at the same time MEP details are integrated and nothing is clashing with respect to each other's discipline to ensure smooth construction cycle. Now I would take you through the live uh, case studies and the live points. So all these things you know we have discussed so far is uh, broadly theoretical but I would show you some of the live examples. So over here, you see uh, this, this is a drawing which is extracted directly from the BIM model. Now you can also check, you know, that at the tip loading, if you enter the crane capacity and the tip loading required, then automation using some uh, logical algorithms, you can figure out, you know, which pieces are complying your tonnage requirements and which are not. So automatically it will highlight in green and red, right? Then over here at the bottom corner, you see this is the BOQ, right from the concrete quantity of hollow core slabs or solid slabs, wall panels, grouts, lifting loop bars, everything you can figure out directly from the BIM building information modeling, right? So based on any given template, you can formulate the BIM process, okay? I would repeat again, BIM is a process, not a software, right? So if you align your process in such a way, 
you can extract all these information in line to your company standards and on the right side you can see the complete complex 24 story building entirely modeled in bim to extract the data also you can figure out the connections with ease one important major aspect of using bim is you get enough amount of clarity in 3d visualization right so uh, wherever you have any difficulty challenge in understanding how the elements will get connected to each other or any specific joint you can directly hover your model onto that point cut a specific section and address that issue very quickly so these connection sections are also uh, drawn and uh, detailed in the bim process and uh, this is a unit plan so further for any building you can optimize your unit plan from day 1 okay Redu reduction in number of pieces increasing the repeatability of pieces and ensuring that you have minimal number of joints in 2d and 3d precast now these are the drawings directly extracted from bim uh, process right so you can use any given software i'll show you in my further slides ample amount of softwares are available you can use any tool any software and you can extract the information as you like so what we have done is now we believe that you use any technology it should benefit you right otherwise it makes no sense so most of the task of drawing creation is automated in our office right so we do not have uh, n number of uh, detailers and bim modelers we have very limited uh, bim modelers with uh, ample amount of design engineers in our office and most of 80% of the drawings are extracted automatically let's say like view creations bar bending schedule only limited amount of annotations are required to be done in fact the number of loop boxes tonnage of uh, steel quantity concrete panel tonnage entire title block is filled automatically so these things are driven automatically and we are optimally using the bim process along with the software technology we are using now what happens uh, in the production how it is benefiting the production nowadays we remember way back in 2015 16 uh, there were no provisions available in certain uh, bim based softwares to extract pxml or machine learning files today most of the softwares comply with machine learning files so if i model the rebar into the model automatically you know the factory can utilize the pxml file for automatic rebar cut and bend in fact welded wire mesh has been uh, produced by kef infra now known as katera through our uh, you know pxml files automatically for most of their projects then automatic rebar uh, robotic placements of side shutters during the wall panel production can also be planned rfid tracking of panels have also been uh, discussed then uh, planning could also be done using bim model or the digital information available from the bim model so you get a very clear picture what are the number of pieces how many number of joints what is your grout quantity what is your sealant quantity if at all you digitize your entire process and remember it's a process it's a long term journey right so i would say that you will not reap your fruits or results in day 1 if you start implementing a process there is a certain investment cost to it as well and then over the longer duration as you go on building your library or inputs and processes you reap the benefits out of this particular process so i would like to tell you that these are ample amount of softwares which are available today you know this is this is research by us way back about 2 years back now as we speak more than 50 different softwares might have been added right from planning stage design stage build stage operating stage during the entire life cycle of the building you name an activity and a software is available so as a organization as an institute as a you know a, let's say whether you are a contractor architect or mep consultant or you know you are working in any particular discipline or any trade which is associated with precast you have to identify which software is resolving your task and which is saving time and cost for you and accordingly you can integrate these softwares in your building information modeling process right so these are the various uh, trades in precast or people involved to complete a, a live project on precast we have a owner contractor structural engineers architects mep engineers and pmc con consultants widely so these are the various uh, you know trades how they benefit and reap the benefit by implementing bim or using dfma approach 
so most of the times dfma approach and bim are in line to each other they function in line to each other so when you use dfma approach you are you know moving most of the activities parallelly so that is the reason we benefit out of offsite construction or modular construction whereas in conventional technology you know every activity starts after another activity so that's the reason we are not able to avail the benefits out of it so time saved is money saved right so that's how we look at the dfma approach in totality now uh, these are the examples of the projects and the complexity of projects which could be handled using a uh, bim process in precast so right from mold technology you can develop the mold technology using bim right from the creating of the molds to engineering of the molds jointing systems boq everything could be done using a bim based tool now this is the second case study for office building for infosys based out of electronic city right so uh, let's say during the entire life cycle on the left side you can see the bim model we have extracted the drawings and that's how the construction of this building is coming up you can see the complex 3d facade panel as well so such kind of panels or such kind of elements you know reinforce you to move towards the bim process so on the left bottom corner you can see the finished building and you can see how the building is constructed in precast as well so i am trying to connect the dots wherein you can understand right from the design till the execution phase how similarity is there and how we are able to optimally utilize the bim process and benefit right from client to the contractors this is a multi level car park project again for infosys in electronic city so comprising of multi level car park and office building were completed in about 18 months around 8 lakh square feet project size and you can see the beauty of precast typical floor repeating these planter box were also done in precast 3d elements uh, this is a mosque project uh, again a complex challenging you know a precast project but it really reveals the beauty of precast in such uh, architectural ornamental features so on the left side you can see the imagination or the architectural intent on the right side you see the structural intent so we were able to mostly match the intents the small domes in between uh, are uh, in uh, you know block work lightweight block work so the minarets were about uh, you know 25 meters from the terrace area so this is how you know the uh, arches were fabricated in the factory these are finally at the site uh, you know we were very excited about the minaret and its design finally they were loaded onto the trailers and brought to the site so it was very interesting and fascinating for us you know to see the minarets coming at the uh, at the site location because it's a one time use kind of a structure you know you don't have uh, the repeatability of these elements probably every piece was repeated about four times and uh, it was a bit challenging to make it cost effective in it, when it comes to mold fabrications so this is the final uh, you know uh, output of the building and elevation on the left side you see it's a naked concrete structure you can appreciate the beauty in precast technology on right side it's a finally finished building the minaret you see are all in concrete only primer and paint has been applied this is again a challenging project for uh, one of the oldest mosque in mumbai about 200 year old they have demolished and they are reconstructing it and the entire facade is being done in precast technology so these kind of projects you know reinforce and tell you that you know there is no other alternative but to use bim and a 3d modeling tool to achieve the architectural vision some mock ups have been done at the site and now we would be doing the complete uh, facade in precast now this is a case study of a residential building although a lot of speakers eminent speakers uh, yesterday have also covered the res residential segment and you would have realized how uh, potentially bim and 3d based softwares are used uh, now uh, in this we were able to you know identify and minimize the number of 2d elements for a residential unit plan and thereby you know arriving at uh, whatever cost effective boqs and uh, planning and erection schedule so this is a magic breeze project in uh, located in hyderabad for which we have done the concept evaluation 
so this is a this was a very challenging structure wherein you know we had cantilevers up to 2 2.5 meters on which uh, planted columns and planter boxes and uh, you know so aesthetically the building was very beautiful and we have achieved it uh, using precast technology now this is you know our uh, dream project uh, which we did a concept design for hira homes right from 12th floor till 32nd floor we were having swimming pools and uh, this kind of a project uh, to be done and evaluated even at tender level you require you know a 3d based tool or a bim process so from 12th floor till 32nd floor we were having swimming pools and so on so we had uh, three basements which were in cast in situ and then the building above was entirely in precast so we did a part of this particular building to identify you know per square feet boq and this is how you know we extracted the models and bill of materials after doing structural engineering analysis and design so such kind of complex projects you know reinforce you to use you know 3d modeling tools and bim process now this is uh, for 3d ppvc our speakers yesterday have also covered this in the segment we had done a concept evaluation for this and using five pieces you can actually build you know one rk room right so this is how we have fragmented so i'm trying to you know evaluate and show you several categories of project which you can eventually do so this is how like uh, using four pods and balcony pieces in 2d precast you can achieve a one rk flat unit so what you see here is this is one uh, studio pod this is one kitchen pod and living room pod and then you have a central toilet pod with a balcony piece attached to it the tonnage of uh, this particular pod roughly is about 12 to 15 tons now this is a cladding panel again a cladding project in gfrc which we are designing for one of the precasters in kuwait so uh, this kind of a curved panel so this panels are curved in plan as well as in elevation so this kind of project also you know reinforces that there is no other alternative for you to you know use any 2d based uh, tools you can only achieve the architect's vision and at the same time you have to ensure that you know these elements are further producible using least amount of molds using a single mold we we will be able to produce all the elements that's how you know we have achieved uh, the design so on top you see the coping structure and these are the gfrc cladding structure panels this is another uh, project wherein uh, we have uh, 2d curved panels uh, two dimensional curvatures in plan as well as in elevation in precast now this is another uh, you know architect's vision this building is coming up in dehradun wherein we are proposing to have a precast and a combination of gfrc there is another office building project coming up in dehradun for which uh, you know it's a parametric precast facade which we are evaluating this is a gem school project uh, built in kochi in smart city of uh, kerala it's around 5.5 lakhs square feet so here you know we have used uh, like people often uh, come to you to sell their softwares but the software has got a certain limitation you have to understand that so it it was a german based software and we tried exploring that software and we modeled the complete building in that software but whereas that software was only capable to deliver pxml files for wall panels or beam that's it it was not capable to model the entire building and somehow you know after our r&d for about one and a half months the software crashed when we modeled the entire building so we realized every software has got a limitation now you have to decide within which fits your bim process and how much to extract from that particular software so you can appreciate the quality of precast and the complexity which has been done for this particular project as well now advanced application i would just like to give you a quick brief about advanced applications we would see a lot more parametric modeling which would reinforce everyone to use a bim process in nearby future once you have the digital model there is a lot of potential to do artificial intelligence data analytics on your existing model at the same time i would show you some of the applications of virtual reality used real time in precast uh, factories and then 3d printed concrete structures are one more segment which you will see the rise 
in upcoming decade already we have covered a brief on 3d ppvc pods so definitely you know we have seen you know since a long time and since centuries definitely we have uh, uh, you know invented concrete and we have explored lot of other construction materials but it's now a way to build sustainable future the precast or modular construction or offset construction would be the only solution in near future so this is a real time virtual application developed by one of the companies of uh, finfrock right so uh, this is how you know the people would appreciate that a person working in the production factory doesn't need a drawing using virtual reality he can envisage where to place the rebar where to place the lifting uh, hooks and uh, lifting sockets mep junction boxes and so on so this would be the future application of bim in precast also i mean uh, you, using you know uh, the laser applications already it's being done by lot of factories but using virtual reality you know people would be able to see where to place accessories and so on during production and probably in erection stage as well now i would like to uh, give a quick light on 3d printed concrete structures you most of you might be aware about it uh, we hear a lot about it in news currently 3d printed concrete structures uh, require bim process or robotic integration with your design so that the robotic printers can actually print complex geometries of uh, structures because molds for such kind of applications is not possible right so at this point in time this technology is limited to printing only one material at a time thereby we are seeing often in most of the countries only load bearing structures have been built as a prototype what drives us to use bim for precast buildings why i would like to you know speech you about using bim in precast first of all as a organization our focus is on design and engineering rather than you know churning out the shop drawings fabrication drawings erection drawings correct so we have automated most of our task wherein we spend 80% of our time in design and engineering you know minimizing the number of components uh, detailing the joints and uh, reducing let's say whatever jointing detailing and so on and spend lesser amount of time on fabrication drawings thereby you know gradually we would be a data driven company okay so our designs would be driven by the past data that we would collect through digitization of our construction models we are offering a 0 mm error free models and drawings which leads to accurate production and erection it further enhances the quality of precast it redefines industry standards right bim allows easy revision or changes in your model because drawings are you know updated automatically now a 3d model brings a very clear visualization picture right from the design stage to production stage erection stage and most of your designs would be futuristic uh, designs uh, futuristic designs would be data driven if you implement bim right at this point in time and we see the future of structural engineering and design modular construction which would be built to last for at least 100 years okay and uh, further last but not the least it allows greater amount of clarity in production and enhances speed of erection with this i would like to end my session i would like to also thank uh, the organizers for giving us an opportunity this is a recent award which we have won from ministry of housing and urban affairs uh, and uh, by our honorable prime minister and through this forum we would like to thank them for uh, enabling us we, we would be doing further r and d in uh, 3d ppvc and developing further connections and we would be contributing towards is is codes uh, eventually which would be uh, dealing with 3d ppvc modules thank you so much with this i would like to thank you any audience questions so 3d ppvc yes yes so uh, you know we had presented this particular design to government of india for achieving our mass housing vision so uh, what uh, it would be like a uh, it would be funded by government of india and we would be doing research on 3d ppvc we would be developing right from the mold technology to the modules here in india uh, under the make in india program as well uh, in collaboration with uh, iit chennai standardization of the molds and other things so that 
it can be mass produced because everyone develops his own uh, sizes it will not work it's so it's uh, it's basically you know laying some guidelines so that uh, 3d ppvc could be used nationwide so that would be the main agenda sir first of all it would be more of like developing some legal guidelines so that uh, you know we can use 3d ppvc for mass housing projects at a you know on a large scale level wherein we can also formulate a strategy for small time players also to be introduced uh, to precast technology so with least amount of investment how small players and small contractors can also participate for uh, building the projects using precast technology and in particular 3d ppvc okay then how do you uh, test the efficacy of the joints and other thing when you are doing the 3d uh, 3d uh, this pods and all so basically uh, it's like how, a do you, how do you check it like uh, yes this is working because for individual slabs and other things you can have load test and other thing in this how do you do it so basically we do emulative connections right and at the same time we do uh, fam analysis also using ansys and abacus tools in regards to the connection so whatever forces are coming on the connections so that is all theoretical studies on desktop studies apart from that we would also be doing uh, live uh, mock ups and test you know using shake tables as well as uh, the hydraulic lab setup either at iit roorkee or iit chennai you can just show that your uh, drawing for this uh, pod would like to understand how you are jointing between the pods yes, so so uh, we would be jointing between two pods uh... you will be keeping one pod above the other uh -huh. how you are doing the connections between that it so, is uh, basically horizontal connections are dry connections between two pods okay yes that means that uh, the wall between the two pods it is uh, the thickness will be double Yes, so this thickness, what you see for one of the walls is 100 mm interior walls, and 100 mm for another wall. Okay. This further we can reduce to 90 mm as well. And the joints between them is only a dry joint; it's nothing in between. Yes, yes. Kept. And yes. And that means it, there will lot of accuracy needed because when you are uh, going uh, one above the other, yes, yes. Then there can be chances of. Yes, yes, yes. We have realized that. So also on those parameters, we are working. Okay. And uh, how do you manage this progressive collapse and all? So progressive collapse is managed in the design. We have internal ties, and in the dry connections, we keep the provisions of that. But here, progressive collapse doesn't play a major picture because it's a 3D module, right? So it's an entire module. It's not a 2D precast panel. So in 2D precast panel, you know there is a, a let's say a fear. Uh, if one wall will collapse then you know the surrounding structure is endangered or there is a sudden collapse in 3d ppvc the risk is very less for progressive collapse because it's a intact entire 3d module it's as good as maiwan or any conventional methodology okay thank you 13 story sir 13 story okay. thank you sir uh, let me compliment you first of all for a very in depth uh, presentation you, on uh, bim uh, and also compliments for your uh, certification towards gstc okay. this is very great uh, initiative being a kind of a start of company what uh, we are at bjshir k what we have been finding a difficulty is to generate the various libraries for customized precast elements which is specific to our technology so with that in view do you recommend any uh, bim software which does take on because we tried uh, take line others it couldn't succeed to an extent uh, do you have do you recommend anybody who who can be approached for this so, so basically can... uh, see like a single software uh, you have to just keep yourself to a single software and build your ecosystem around it no software will give you 100% solution we have tried multiple plugins uh, multiple softwares we have wasted enormous amount of money being a consultant it doesn't help so what we have finally did is we stuck to one software we have built our entire ecosystem around it we developed our in house uh, plugins libraries everything so we do not spend on any additional plugins there is a zero plugin we use all these drawings what i am showing you it's based on a single software and then we build a small algorithms or 
tools or softwares and stuff like that. Yeah, which so was the, which was the software that you Revit, preferred. sir, Revit. Revit. As far as unit technique files and all, all that are concerned for feeding now, to the... Yeah, now that's, it's giving. That's not a, now Revit not a is also giving PXML, unit technique, everything. Yeah, that's not a problem. Yes, it's only the problem to creation of libraries. Yes, yes, sir. Perhaps we'll work on that, what you mentioned. Okay, sure, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Jabir. Hello. Uh, just wanted to know because we are trying to implement Beam in our office for last more than four or five years now. Yes, sir. And we have been unsuccessful. It's total disaster. I spent hell amount of money. I tried n number of resources, but I could not achieve it. Where I'm going wrong? So what happens is, uh, you know, let's say uh, we need certain amount of output. Correct. So let's say as a principal designer, uh, after doing my engineering analysis and design, I'm required to give my erection drawings and fabrication drawings to my customers. These are major two things. Now we have to just do backward integration and uh, create set of parameters wherein automatically I can get the task. So we've written some automation scripts to do that task. Uh, otherwise for every project manually, you'll have to create title blocks, you have to place the views, Okay, for erection drawings, hardly we have 20, 30 drawings or something like that. Uh, that's okay. But for when it comes to fabrication drawings, I would tell you for 1 lakh square feet project size, we delivered in Bahrain, 1 lakh project size, around 500 drawings. We did it with using four resources in a month's time. We as a design engineer, we model the building, we put the rebar ourselves only. We do not rely on the BIM engineers. So basically the role of the BIM engineer is only related to doing the annotation. That's it. Because being a designer, I know better how the detailing should be done, where the stresses are more, where to put the reinforcement. Everything is my, in my brain. So I don't have to be, you know, uh, uh, told by someone. So that's how we have formulated the strategy. As a design engineer, we build the entire model like the contractor would do. Then we automate the task. We generate all the drawings and we give to the BIM engineers only for annotation. That's it. So that's how we have developed the process, sir. Uh, thank you. One more thing just wanted to know, uh, because most of the projects, what happens is uh, during concept stage, we have to go on to 2D platform. Correct. Yes, that sir. is what we are doing. And uh, when we are doing that in the 2D and we go into so many details and, you know, uh, as a design development stage, that uh, now, you know, preparing the shop drawing and uh, preparing the erection drawing is not a very big task in 2D platform itself. Correct. So, you know, I see that, you know, that 3D has a very limited kind of a, or Beam has a very limited kind of a situation where I will be implementing it right from day one. I cannot implement it. Are you implementing it from day one? Yes, yes. So all the projects, I'll tell you, AutoCAD, we do not have a draftsman in our office. Okay. There's a zero draftsman. So if I get a client's inquiry, okay, you help me in the tender stage. Day one, we model it in BIM. Then the same model, because we have created a process. So we are trained in that direction. From day one, do everything in BIM. Right now we are delivering, uh, like, uh, there are multiple villas, almost 5,000 villas to be built. So there are about two typologies. So two typologies, entire concept, design, drawings, uh, sections, BOQs, everything, we are delivering in just two days. Because in AutoCAD, what happens is, once you change the plan, you have to go back to elevation, sections, change all the drawings. If draftsmen agar koi mistake ho jati hai, to it is left out. But in BIM, the drawings are automatic. If you change the model, I mean, drawings cannot be wrong in BIM. Only annotations could be wrong. If you can pick point, agar usne kuch galat liya hai, pick point, the dimension idhar udhar ho sakta hai. Otherwise, the model is correct, drawings will be correct. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now we will have a quick presentation from our one of the sponsor, Comansa. I'd request the Comansa, Mr. Ravi Narayan from Comansa to come on the stage and quickly uh, introduce their products and services to us. Uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Ravi Narayan. I come from Escorts Limited and with me is my colleague Sanjay Yadav. Uh, to give you a background, Escorts uh, is a uh, leading engineering company based out of Faridabad, and we have been here for almost 75 plus years. Uh, our core strength has been, uh, over the years, been on tractors, construction equipment like uh, hydra cranes, mobile backhoe loaders, road compactors, and railway equipment division. 
and as uh, uh, we have been always trying to improve our product presence in the market with additional uh, uh, equipment which through which we can support the business requirements in 2009 we tied up with uh, comenza and comenza are a leading uh, uh, tower crane manufacturer they are the inventors of the flat tops and they are based out of spain they have two plants one in spain and one in um, china and over the last 12 years uh, we have uh, more than 100 units working with leading companies like shapurji lnt uh, tata uh, housing i know recently we have backed the prestigious award from uh, my homes for a f- uh, 50 ton crane as you could have seen in the previous uh, presentation uh, how vertical transportation is important how it uh, cut shorts your product costs and also improves your uh, you know uh, the uh, doing away with form work etc so we 2016 onwards we have been uh, focusing mainly on the uh, precast segment and we are happy to say that we are quite a good presence and we are very happy customers now i would request my colleague uh, uh, sanjay yadav to lead take you through the presentation which will give you the product variants what capacities we serve and how are we different from the you know the other uh, makes thank you sanjay thank you ravi sir good afternoon uh, my name is sanjay yadav i'm from escorts limited india uh, representing comansa tower crane in india since uh, the online presentation on comansa has already been delivered yesterday mr by mr javier who is the marketing head sitting at comansa spain head office since uh, we being the uh, sponsors uh, of this event have been given the opportunity to showcase some of the unique and salient features of the comansa tower cranes which are being used uh, preferably in precast constructions so just quickly i will take you through the various advantages of the comansa why the comansa cranes are being used uh, while lifting or while tackling the heavy panel weights i will also i take you through some of the uh, projects which are being completed by employing comansa tower cranes in india as mr weber in his presentation has shown that the two iconic precast projects one of 120 meters height being developed uh, that is already developed by arvindo pharma in hyderabad at high tech city also he has shown in his presentation that a 40 story building which precast building which is probably going to be the uh, you can say a tallest tower in south south asia that is of 190 meters and for that i'm proud to say that the customer has chosen 450 ton comansa tower cranes to execute this project i would have been thankful to mr baba when he shown that arvindo farmer slide where in that 120 meters tall building already executed this uh, that tower also was executed by comansa tower cranes only uh, the capacity of the cranes was 18 ton here in case of this 43 story building which is being developed by my own construction is going to be 50 ton class crane comansa has been the forerunner in creating a system of tower crane with modular concept a strategy which is being adopted by rest of the industry because of it has got enormous advantages to the end customers so comansa is over 50 years old company which is designing manufacturing supplying and supporting the customers across the globe and this is the long legacy of 50 years experience in manufacturing a single product that is only tower crane has led comansa to establish among the leading manufacturers and suppliers of tower crane across the globe this is the global presence of comansa comansa global headquarters it at is at Pamplona that is some of you might be knowing a city of bull fights the factory that is head office and factory at Pamplona another factory they have got at Hangzhou China from there on they supply or cater to the uh, needs of asian countries with over 20 plus 1000 tower cranes across the globe are decommissioned serving to over 700 plus 70 plus countries and since this being a very uh, uh, family owned company having a turnover of around 100 million euro some of you might be knowing that about linden linden was you can say 
uh, they were very strong and robust in, uh, in terms of modality in designing the cranes in the late 1970s. Comansa took over London in 1983, added to its portfolio, and since uh, they were so strong and uh, popular that the Comansa could not dare to uh, remove the name Linden from their original name and still they are following or propagating the legacy of Comansa in the name of Linden Comansa even today itself. Since, as I told, the Comansa is the pioneer of flat top technology in tower crane. So, because of having the flat top, flat top cranes have a lot of advantages over hammerhead cranes or the cranes with having the cat head wherein the main jib is supported by slanting ties. So, also the advantage of flat top is that while erecting or dismantling the cranes, part by part erection can, be ta can, can take place and with the smallest possible mobile crane, the erection of the cranes can be done as well as dismantling also can be done. Also, the challenge of tackling higher capacity panel weights uh, is quite a lot in precast concepts. Hence, in precast concepts, only smaller capacity, uh, smaller jib lengths are being used because of uh, tackling the heavy panel weights. So while doing so, being a flat top, if the few cranes are working in close vicinity to each other, they can overlap with each other with the shortest possible heights. Minimum resistance to fatigue, this is, uh, as you all might be knowing that the cranes with the, uh, where the jibs are supported by the ties, the portion of the jib, which is just beyond the ties, it is most vulnerable and, and is, uh, that is having the most impact while lifting the heavy loads. But since in a flat top, there is no tie, the, whatever the load lifted at any span of the crane, the impact of that uh, uh, lifting is being borne by entire jib lens rather than the particular jib section of, which is beyond or uh, within the tie bar. Also, the advantage of uh, command side in design is that you, you will have the more advantage interchanging of uh, uh, mass sections as, as well as jib sections. If suppose you are having a 10 ton crane, tomorrow you want to uh, reconfigure it to maybe 16 ton crane. So with the minimum possible change of, you can say, uh, panels as well as jib sections, you can convert your existing 10 ton crane to higher version of 16 ton capacity crane. These are the common advantages of Comansa flat to tower cranes. Quicker and safe assembly. Storage is easy because all the mass sections, they can be further uh, sub-dismantled in the form of panels. So when we, uh, a lot more panels can be transported in a single uh, flat top trailer. So you are saving a huge transportation cost. Also, the greatest advantage of the uh, command set hour can, that is the challenge comes when we work in the precast while tackling heavy panel weights. So while placing as well as while lifting the panels, the inching control is required to ensure safety while placing the heavy panels as well as while lifting the panel from the factory or from the uh, loaded trailer. So these are some of the unique fe features I would like to apprise you about Comansa tower cranes. This is a double trolley. I think you all might be knowing that all the tower cranes, they have double trolley system, wherein the, both these trolleys can be split according to the working requirement. But here, the advantage in Comansa is that these splitting of these tro two trolleys can be done automatically by press of a push button. It takes two to three minutes for an operator to change over from two trolley to single trolley as well as vi and, and vice versa. Second, FE plus, what happens? Sometimes we have to work with the tower crane with the restraints of height. So what happens? The FE plus is a mechanism wherein a operator, when operates this switch, the speed of the crane comes down. So uh, variable frequency drive takes care that the speed, since he, the VFD knows that the crane is working at smaller height, so there is no need to go for higher speed because there is a great probability, probability of meeting accident. So the operator operates this switch, which ensures that from the fifth speed, the crane speed automatic, automatically comes down to third speed and it becomes safer to tackle the construction work. Then is power lift. This is a wonderful feature in Comansa tower crane. What happens? Suppose I have a tower crane having a lifting capacity of or carrying, transporting a lift, uh, load of fight and at 50 meters. Sometimes there comes a challenging situation at sites wherein the customer requires, say, this fight and to be carried to 51 meters or 52 meters. So the Comansa cranes, by virtue of this, their modularity, their design, 
it has the function or it has the option that it has an additional advantage of 10% more radius to be achieved with the same load. It means, as I mentioned, that fight and load, which are supposed to not go beyond 50 meters, you can go by 55 meters. Then is the level of thing. I think this is used in uh, uh, shipyard applications wherein the, the load has to be kept at constant, whereas jeep needs to be left up and down. Then cube cap, this is the red dot awarded cabin uh, uh, of Comansa. And quick set, as I told you, Comansa has the feature of inching control. While placing, while fitting the heavy panels, while, while giving our connections, very, very inching control is feasible. It is just in the hand of, of the operator just to push a button. The, the moment he pushes this button, the speed, the, uh, the frequency drive boats down the speeds to dead zero. And it becomes very safer to place the panel and to route it. These are the uh, uh, range of commands at our range. They manufacture from 4 to 9 to 10 capacity. 3,000 3, series having uh, the tower cranes from 32 to 90 ton. Also, they have luffers from 8 ton to 64 tons. Rest all mediocre range from 8 to 12, 4 to 5 tons. These are some of the uh, projects, commercial and residentials. Some of the cultural and sports facilities. Some high-rise buildings. Ports and shipyards. Power plants, oil and gas, bridges, hydro plants, various ranges. Thank you.